Oh wow. Safety first. Can you edit that? Hello and welcome to the channel. For today's adventure we're going to continue our exploration of the World War II forts of Port Elizabeth. Heading north on our map to a place called Amsterdam Hook or better known as Blue Water Bay. This to my knowledge is the northernmost fortress observation post in the Algoa Bay area protecting the coastline from the east. Many of you might have spotted this building driving past on the N2 highway but today we're going in for a closer look. Joining me on today's adventure is Salty Sea Dog Rolo and Stunt Woman Goose. With the pleasantries out of the way, we arrive at the fort. And the first impression is this one's in better nick than the one at Scoonies. Oh wow, he's still actually in a good position. He still has his shutters open and alles. Yo! One single shutter plate stands resolute where the others have rusted away and fallen off. You can also notice this coating on the outer wall that's absent from the other one we visited, which has clearly played a part in the fort's current condition. The one thing I do notice about this building that's absent from the other one are these diagonal walls at the back, which break up the square shape of the building very effectively when you look at it from the side. I'm also surprised to see that the lower level windows are all still intact and shut firmly to prevent anybody from getting in there. I remember desperately here, To my left, there's another familiar piece of architecture. You see, both Amsterdam Hook and Schoenmakers Kop had the same style of staircase leading up to the fortress. It's very nice thing. Maybe is this the Yeah, the winch. For those of you that haven't seen part 1, we figured out that the smooth ramp section next to the staircase was used to hoist heavy things up on. Think you was all that Yeah. The marks left in the concrete tell the tale of rigging with ropes and cables being used to hoist trolleys laden with heavy equipment and material up the steep side of the hill. For those of you that remember, I ended up spontaneously sliding down the ramp at Schoenmakers Kop on my bum. But today I would come prepared. First add some sand to my runway. Oh my seal. Possibly be of the of my mind. This staircase consists of 85 individual steps, but not all at the same gradient. Maybe in there under where there are more railings. Oh my, I'll be okay then if we can make it work. Let's see. So. Yeah. Slightly steeper slope, the results are mixed. Ooh, that like better. Iku yeah, iku yeah, iku yeah. This boy better. Hello, come here. Safety first. <laughs> Opting for the most severe gradient, the goose shows us how it's done. <laughs> okay. I broke it. With our test trolley written off, we opt for a static demonstration. So what they used to do to waste the cheeky goose up a hill is they had a rope system like this. And over there was the two mounting points for the big winch. Now this rope system would hoist the goose up the hill in a box or a trolley. <laughs> and then what would happen is over time the rope, depending on which position it was in, would wear away the marks. Come let's 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 get Riley involved. Riley? Come. Come. Let's drag the goose. This way. This way. Oh! Apart from some mild embarrassment, no dogs were harmed in this demonstration. It's quite refreshing to see that the original door is still on this building. It seems that the people in this area have taken it upon themselves to look after this monument, as they've gone through the effort to weld up the doors and windows to ensure that nobody squats or damages the building any further. Okay, so almost it didn't work. Yeah, 
Sim. Mas ele estica. Mas eu acho que ele é nem. Now, as much as I'd love to get inside and show you guys what it looks like, I would never break into any of these buildings and leave them open for the people coming after, specifically the vandals that break in and strip out all the steelwork in order to sell it for scrap metal. Apart from poking my camera through this hole, I don't think we're going to be seeing what's on this bottom level as all three possible entries are welded shut firmly. Unless the middle section has got a ladder going down to the bottom level. My train is definitely going to be hard on the Yeah. It's almost like anti-collision. It's almost like come on. A few moments later. Reaching the observation room, I'm sad to see that there's no ladder going down to the bottom level. But the silver lining is there's a ladder going up to the roof, which, if the other forts are anything to go by, might mean that there is a way down to the bottom level. You'll see what I mean shortly. I know. One last check on the front door. That's closed. So nowhere left to go except up. <laughs> the goose making an army reference as I go up to the top of the roof. Glancing into the shaft to my left, I notice that the ladder is still there. Other than the pedestal in the middle of the roof, it's pretty much identical to the previous fort we visited. I believe this pedestal was used for a searchlight, opting to mount it on top of the fort instead of on a separate site. Die leer wat afgaan by die skag. Hy is ookie. Ja. Ja. Okay. okay. Since I wasn't able to get into the bottom level of this building from the outside, although I'm curious and very excited to see what's down there, it's also a little bit unnerving at the same time glancing down and just seeing pitch black and not knowing what to expect. Now I'm not going to be over dramatic and suggest I'm the first person that's been down there in years, but the level of effort required to get to this place is a little bit more than what people are generally prepared to do. And were it not for the fact that I'm specifically out here to commit these places to film, I probably would also have some second thoughts. I'll be honest with you, I'm having second thoughts. Not knowing how this adventure is going to go or what I'm going to find down there, I start the descent. Which almost immediately gets interrupted by these palm tree branches, which were almost certainly purposefully stacked inside the shaft to prevent people from entering. What could someone be hiding down there? At this point my mind is racing through the possibilities, removing more and more palm tree branches as I descend every step. If this building is the same as Schoenmarker's Kop, I should be reaching a room sometime soon but it's absolutely pitch black dark below me. Once I'm satisfied that enough of these palm tree branches have been removed out of the way, I reach for my torch in order to see what's going on. And as I suspected, there's a small room that opens up behind me about a meter down. So I make my final descent and get my torch out. So first impression, someone's definitely used this as a shelter and refuge at some stage. There are some blankets lying around with some rubbish and some burnt ash from someone making a fire. You can see the walls and the roof are all black from the smoke. And now in front of us is the old door frame, which has been bricked up. And that's the reason why nobody can access this place from the outside. And then suddenly I realize I've seen this place before. It's what is the airbox. What is the airbox? It's you. This area really does seem like an exact copy of the Schoenmarker's Kop building, which isn't surprising because they were built at exactly the same time. And as I was making the comparison in my mind, I suddenly heard a call from outside. Yeah! Sorry, I can't hear you. That was genuinely the first call that I managed to hear. This place is quite soundproof. Not getting any great feedback from the goose and hearing the distressful tone in her voice, I decide to go back. I'm not too stressed because I know Private Rollo is standing guard outside, but still. Right? Yeah. Is he better? Yeah. 
Okay, so the goose has managed to climb all the way into the fort. Well done, goose. The school, but says Irene is behind me here intact. That's the onion. <coughs> These dried palm tree leaves have been throwing off fibers down the shaft, and I've been inhaling them all the time I was down there. So the rule is you leave it how you found it. And I found this place with a crap load of palm tree leaves stuffed down the shaft. So back down they go. Let's seal this puppy up. If anybody wants to see what's down there, they can watch my video. Okay, I see an owl. And with that, the goose pokes her pretty little head down through the hole below. And down we go. It's funny how this fort's got a ladder going up to the roof and the one at Squinny's has got a ladder going down to the lower floor. Maybe it's got something to do with the searchlight on the roof. With one final scenic pan shot from the main observation room, we start figuring out how we're going to get the goose down. Oh, I've seen that face before. <laughs> the last remaining shutter. See a plot? No, I'm not. Here is a strap that I'm going to get Maybe. Come on, goose. Get it off your chest. It's my fault. I'm going to see my new one. I'm going to see my new one. No, I'm not. So deep, eh? You can always trust the local graffiti to lighten the mood. So why don't you come better work? Because I guess the Hanno of yeah yesterday. I managed to help her onto the ledge, but from there it's a long way down, which she's going to have to manage by herself. But to be honest, the goose is quite a capable young lass, and remember she was able to climb into the fort by herself to begin with. As I help her down, I can't help but think of all the cars passing on the end too, just looking up and seeing her bum, hanging out of this historical monument from the 1940s. And with that visual, down she goes. Now, at first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking that my body type doesn't lend itself to agility. But let me tell you, I can squeeze into some small spaces. But I'll be honest, this beam over my head is causing quite a few issues for me getting over this ledge. There's a very small landing on the other side that I really need to hit when I reach down. But I make it look easy and I'm home safe. That's all for today, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Some of you might be wondering what happened to the GoPro filming all of this. Rumor has it it's still on that ledge with a full memory card. Just kidding. That room looks like it's got an extra wall in it. Here is just the entrance to the camera. You can see from the back end there was a room and then here the box there and there. Here the door is full length. That handvatsel is where your middle is. I see and I can up. Yeah. Insane, huh? Overall, I was relieved to see that this fort really is still in a relatively good condition. Especially when you compare it to the one at Skunmakerskop. The two are very similar in design with one or two major differences. They both have very similar staircases with the ramp hoist pulley system. Both with ladder access from the lower level to the roof. With the residential development behind the Amsterdam Hook Fort, I would imagine any remnants of old support buildings like barracks, kitchens, ablutions, those would have been torn down long ago to make room for the housing development. The old fort still quietly keeps watch over the Swartkops river mouth and the northern side of Algoa Bay, while many cargo ships arriving and departing from Kucha Industrial Harbour pass its gaze every single day. If you enjoyed watching the video guys, please hit the like button, and if this content interests you, you better subscribe to the channel so I can notify you when I bring out new videos. For more World War II Forts of Port Elizabeth highlights, watch until the end of the video. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.